Good evening, my friends. Today, I just want to continue on the theme from uh, from yesterday. And I want to continue out of Jude chapter 1, which is the only chapter. So, Jude. Out of Jude. <laughs> um, and, and he's talking... He's talking to the people and he just, I'll, I'll just read it and then, and then maybe we'll, we'll think about it together. Uh, and I'll start at verse three. He says, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unaware who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those that believed not. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, He has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And hold on, let's look. Lasciviousness, you know, King James, I I have a bad habit of reading King James, um, but it's just the one that I've, I've read a lot of different versions, but I just studied the King James the most because you can use uh, the Strong's Concordance, which I trust, and you can look up the original Greek like this. So... Uh, but licentiousness, but this word licentiousness is, is excessive, like lust, unbridled lust, you know, and, and it's talking about like basically abusing God's grace to continue in sin, which, um, some people will say, you know, like the once saved, always saved. I heard a guy one time say like, you know, if you believe in the Lord, and then you die a devil worshiper, you're still going to heaven. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and uh, it's just crazy what I've heard some people say. So so I just want to set the record straight once again, where Jude, he's addressing this problem. He, he's talking about it. He's saying, he's speaking to the people. And, uh, and, he's, and he's using this example. Um, first of all, he's, he's saying, you know, there's, there's people who have crept in and they're turning the grace of our God into a license to sin. Basically saying that, you know, you can turn to the Lord and then you can continue to live however you want to, doing whatever you did before, as long as you profess faith in Jesus Christ and you'll still be saved. Um, and this is what the people were saying. And he, and he uses the example of uh, Israel. And he says, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, How that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those that did not believe. And and this is a really good example that he uses. And he he brings to their attention. He's like, look, did God not save all the people out of the land of Egypt? You know what I mean? Like, he brought all those people out of Egypt with signs and wonders and miracles and a mighty hand and even brought them through the Red Sea on dry land. These same people that that walk through the Red Sea on dry land are the same people that he later destroyed in the wilderness because of their unbelief, you know. And we know that, and, I'll, and maybe I'll touch on this too, but Paul even says they were all baptized into Moses. They were part of the first church, you know, and they were all baptized in the Red Sea and they all ate of the spiritual bread and drank from that spiritual rock, which is Christ. So... Israel is the church, and and the people that were brought out of Israel was the first church, and they were baptized too, and and they they ate of the spiritual bread of heaven, and they drank of that spiritual rock, which was Christ. So, you know, they are an example for us to see that they were saved by the Lord from Egypt, which is what we're being saved from, right? We're being saved from Egypt, and... They, in like manner, having escaped Egypt and slavery to sin, technically, um, they escaped slavery, were set free, and then destroyed 
in the wilderness because of their unbelief and because of their complaining and because of their rebellion. So I think it's important to recognize what Jude's saying here. I mean, you can say whatever you want. You know, people are always going to twist the scripture to, t- to fit whatever narrative they want. But look, just read it for yourself. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to add anything to the scripture. I can just plainly read the scripture. And it says what it says. So, and then he uses the example also in verse 6. He says, And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. He's also using this example, like Israel, He's saying, kind of like Israel was God's chosen and enslaved in Egypt and then brought out and separated from the world and then still condemned because of their unbelief. These angels who were separated unto God's service and created for that very purpose, who even saw his face and stood in his presence and were perfect in the day they were created until iniquity was found in them, then he reserved them in chains for judgment. So this is the grace that we need to understand. You know, it's not the grace to continue to willfully disobey God. Like, slipping up in sin is one thing, but to continue in sin and rebellion against God is another thing altogether. And if you if you feel like maybe you've you've slipped into a position of uh, you've gone too far or whatever, here's what I've learned, and I'll do another video about this actually too. But if you're worried about whether or not you've sinned an unforgivable sin or you've gone too far or you've uh, you know abused this grace, um, you haven't, <laughs> because anytime. And I'll show you examples in scripture. Anytime someone had crossed this line with the Lord, they were unrepentant and they were not thinking about God and God allowed them to harden their hearts unto their very own destruction. But let's understand that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And, you know, the end is love, but it starts with fear. And fear is what keeps you from thinking you can abuse the grace that's been given us. Amen.